In scene two of The Glass Menagerie, Laura is polishing her beloved glass animals when she hears her mother approaching. So she pushes the bowl of glass animals aside and places a diagram of a typewriter keyboard in front of her. Appearing grim and hopeless, Amanda enters. Laura asks her mother why she's upset. Amanda explains she didn't go to her DAR meeting, that is, Daughters of the American Revolution, an organization of women who trace their American lineage to the Revolutionary War. For the record, in the 1930s, the DAR was considered snobbish and exclusive. Instead, she stopped by the Rubicam Business College to check on Laura's progress, only to learn Laura had dropped out only a few days after she had begun. The typing instructor explained that Laura was so scared of the typing test, she became sick and left, never to return. Amanda accuses Laura of deceit and demands to know how she has been spending her days. Laura confesses that she has been walking, visiting museums, aviaries, the zoo, and occasionally the movies. Laura explains the prospect of a timed typing test terrified her so much she vomited on the floor and was too ashamed to go back and give it another try. Amanda fears they will end up living off the charity of relatives, concerned that fragile Laura is unfit to work. When Amanda brings up marriage, Laura admits she did have a crush in high school on a popular and accomplished boy who nicknamed her Blue Roses, a mishearing of pleurosis, a circulatory disease which kept her out of school and injured her leg. Amanda states that the only solution left for Laura is to marry, like other young women with no job skills end up doing. Amanda dismisses the idea that anything's wrong with Laura, telling her daughter she just needs to cultivate and develop charm. Amanda is an expert at making her children feel guilty. Laura mentions the awful suffering look like the picture of Jesus' mother in the museum as she explains why she didn't tell her mother about leaving business college, which is not a university, but rather a small for-profit secretarial school that taught typing, shorthand, bookkeeping, and other subjects useful for office work. Amanda's dismissiveness at Laura's admission to liking a boy when she was in high school mocks her daughter's pleasant memory. Extra depressing considering how Amanda herself lives in her past glories and memories of her own gentleman callers. In addition to living in the past, the theme of abandonment surfaces in this scene. Amanda may suffer from some of the metaphoric blindness that Tom refers to at the beginning of the play, for she is oblivious whenever her son or daughter balks at her demands, expectations, or visions. She fears Tom's departure as a sequel to her husband's abandonment, a never-ending anxiety. Laura continually cleans and polishes her figurines in her realization that the world presents too many emotional hurdles for her and that any self-confidence she might have is fragile.